I'm in it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's event for compensation and claims at the College of the Canyons. It's about 10.01. We're going to get started here. So I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping rules for you guys. So we do have your audio and video turned off to decrease distractions and help with the bandwidth as we go from slide to slide. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded and by staying on this webinar, you're giving consent to that. If you happen to leave or get kicked out for some reason, just use the same link to sign on again. Um, if uh, you guys have also received a few documents in the Eventbrite email yesterday and earlier today that contain some documents and useful links to use in the future. There is also a PDF version of the Vet Resources book, and you guys will also get that in the chat later on today. So also, I want, I want you guys to utilize the questions and answer panel. So uh, we have a lot of information going on today. So we do ask that you use the Q&A tab instead of the chat box. Um, so if you haven't used this function before, all you have to do is just hover over the top of your screen and then click on the Q&A tab, and you can directly um, type in questions and answers there. And I have my counterpart here, Sean Campbell, and uh, he's a subject subject matter expert, and he's going to be helping answer questions as we go along. So also, I want to add for the, we have a lot of speakers today um, We that are going to be talking about the compensation and claims. So uh, first, I have myself, and I'm going to be doing a brief overview, then we're going to be having the link, the local interagency network coordinator, his name is Anthony Rodriguez. And then after that, we're going to have uh, Hector Castillo talk about the County Veteran Service Office and the roles and responsibilities. And then we're going to have George Dixon. And then uh, followed, followed by that, we're going to have a short uh, virtual uh, questions and answer panel just to um, finish up and uh, answer any remaining questions that you guys have. So like I said, my name is uh, Michael Monk. I am a training coordinator here at the California Department of Veteran Affairs um, with the California Transition Assistance Program. And I have done about 12, uh, about 12 years in the Navy myself. So I did about seven years active duty and another five years reserve. So I understand what you guys are going through and your transitioning phases and moving on and doing other things. So uh, I wanted to tell you guys what is uh, CalTAP. Um, so CalTAP is designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras to their earned uh, federal and state benefits, as well as provide continued support and assistance um, to veterans as their needs do change over time through these uh, five pathways. And uh, I, I really want to emphasize, um, you know, the, need, the needs do change over time because uh, a veteran from Vietnam era might be different from, you know, an Iraq veteran or, you know, Afghanistan or Gulf War or something like that. And we do that through these five pathways. That is a core curriculum, uh, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and service providers. This right here is our CalTAP continued support options. And this is just ways to stay connected with us. So you can provide your non-DOD email to CalTAP. Um, you can register for My CalVet. You can uh, add CalVet Veteran Services on social media. You can attend webinars and you can um, you can fill out today's webinar survey. So um, this is just a survey that we provide to you guys. And we really do like to actually get the feedback from this because it helps us you know, engineer and make our webinars better in the future. So if you could uh, please fill out that survey and there's the QR code and the link there below. And also on that uh, right-hand panel is our social media channels as well. So right here on our CalTAP page, so if you just Google calvet.ca.gov and uh, you can click on the CalTAP icon and that's going to bring you to our CalTAP page and those five pathways that we're just talking about. And right under webinars, you can see archives. And this is for previously, previously recorded webinars. If you, um, you know, want to go back or maybe there's something that you missed or, you know, maybe you're just interested in some other information, that's a great way to get started. 
So um, as far as our California specific benefits, um, these are what's offered to you through the state of California. Um, as uh, these are a little bit different than the uh, federal benefits, but this is something specifically through the, the state of California. So uh, just a brief overview of this, I wanna go over a couple of these. The college tuition fee waiver is for veterans of, is, is for dependents of veterans. And um, this is generally if you have a disability rating of anywhere from zero to 100 percent. And this is basically to waive college tuition for your children to independence to go to school in the state of California. And it's uh, honestly one of our most popular benefits and most uh, widely used ones that we have. There's also the veteran designated driver's license. This is actually just to get the word veteran designated on your driver's license. And uh, this will uh, this will help with, you know, certain uh, businesses and, you know, discount programs and things like that that honor that. Uh, the motor vehicle registration fee waiver, this uh, will register, this, this will waive um, any of the fees that you have for vehicle registration. And um, as far as most of you know, being in the state of California, that does get to be a little bit expensive. Um, there's the reduced fishing and hunting licenses um, and the, also the no cost state park pass and uh, so for the reduced fishing and hunting licenses, this generally does require a 50% uh, disability. And uh, this is uh, this is so that you can do um, recreational activities and you know ex explore the beauty and the nature of California and you can do that at a discount. And um, the same thing with the state park pass as well. Um, also, the uh, disabled veteran property tax exemption, uh, this is the way of your property taxes. Um, this does require 100% disability. Um, for the business license, so uh, when we start to talk about business license, tax, and fee exemption, uh, I do recommend that you guys do speak with your local tax, uh, tax assessor's office because this can differ from county to county. Uh, even though it is within the state, different counties have uh, different information on their uh, taxes as well. So I do, I do recommend you get with your local CVSO, your County Veteran Service Office, um, if you're interested in that. Uh, CalVet Home Loans. Um, so CalVet Home Loans is, uh, it's different than your VA home loan. And um, it's just another uh, type of loan that you guys can use that's uh, sponsored through the um, that's sponsored through the state of California. And um, it is possible to, uh, I've even heard situations where you can co coincide and use both um, your VA and your CalBet home loan. So um, that's an, definitely another great benefit that we have. There is also the uh, CalVet Women's Division, and this is to provide outreach and support for uh, that for, uh, you know, women veterans, and it's that a group that's geared specifically uh, toward women. And there's also a, a minority division as well, and that's to help unnaturalized citizens, um, you know, to gain citizenship and things like that. And uh, those are also both on our on our homepage on uh, calvet.ca.gov. So you can um, go on there and you can click on the CalVet programs with a little drop down menu. And then you can uh, click on either one of those programs and it can bring up their uh, contact information as well. For the CalVet, CalVet homes for uh, long-term care, um, I'm sure you know, most of you guys that are listening um, aren't you know, uh, considering long-term care or anything like that right now, but you might have a veteran or somebody in your family that uh, might be considering this. And uh, this is um, spread across eight different locations through uh, California. And it also, um, it provides uh, long-term care for uh, vets offering medical, dental, uh, pharmacy and rehabilitation as well. And um, these are uh, income-based uh, skilled nursing facilities. And also for the uh, CalVet cemeteries, uh, there is uh, three CalVet cemeteries that are in Seaside, Reading, and Yauntville. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the Veterans Resource Book. Um, this is just what it looks like. And this is uh, a great way for you guys to 
um, get information, um, also more in detail things about compensation and claims. Um, it goes a little bit more in detail about the federal process for claims as well. Uh, so this is definitely a great place to get started and um, a great place if you're looking for other contacts as well. Um, and my uh, counterpart, Sean Campbell, will also uh, have a copy of this in the uh, chat, men uh, chat menu as well, just in case you guys didn't get a copy of it. This right here is the uh, VA.gov. So um, this is their little portal for benefits in healthcare. So um, it's, an, it's a nice little hub here to uh, have your, your healthcare, your education, uh, disability and records. Um, that way it kind of keeps it in one place so you don't have to go uh, all over the place to um, a lot of different links and a lot of different uh, websites. And it's uh, really good to have this um, handy. Right here is my contact information, and here is the hotline for the California Department of Veteran Affairs, and uh, that is th their number and website up there, and that is my contact information. I'm pretty responsive by email. I'll, I usually have a 24-hour uh, turnaround, and again, there's our social media channels uh, up there with the, with the QR code if you want to scan that as well. Up next, we'll have uh, Anthony Rodriguez, and he is the uh, local interagency network coordinator for the Los Angeles region. Uh, good morning, Anthony, are you there? I'm here, can you see me okay? Yes, I can, I, I can hear you well, uh, just as well. Okay, awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to help uh, in particular students at COC. So let's go ahead and get started. And I am the local interagency network coordinator uh, next page, please. I'm kind of the regional person, the representative from CalVet who actually lives in the area. Um, you can see from the map here that I'm one of eight individuals uh, stationed in, throughout the state of California. The area that I work, as you can see toward the bottom of this page, is in the turquoise, and I represent the Los Angeles and Ventura County areas. Um, I have a responsibility for somewhere in the area of nearly 300,000 veterans who live in this area. And I work hard with uh, George Dixon, Hector Castillo, and other staff members on the county, as well as uh, federal uh, staff um, from VA, county staff, nonprofits, uh, other state agencies, so that when you have a, a question or call or concern, we can connect you to the appropriate benefits. But back to this chart, um, the links are state, are positioned in, in uh, locations throughout the state. We have individuals, as I mentioned, in the Los Angeles Ventura County area, where I am. We have someone in Orange County, someone in the San Diego Imperial County area. We have an individual who covers all of the Inland Empire up to Mono County. Um, we have someone in the Central Valley, someone on the Central Coast. Uh, we have uh, the Bay Area covered, and then the top 20 states or so uh, in Northern California. Next page. So as links, uh, we provide outreach um, to active duty service members. I actually uh, go and provide briefings at uh, Naval Base Ventura County, Edwards Air Force Base, LA, Veteran, uh, LA Air Force Base, and, uh, uh, and also the Coast Guard out of Long Beach. Um, in addition to that, I provide information to veterans like yourself at various events, resource fairs, and, and other events, as I was mentioning. Um, we um, work very hard so that when you have a particular need, we can make a, a connection and a direct referral to someone that we know rather than an 800 number. Um, because there's only one of me in this entire you know, huge area, um, it really helps us to have a bird's eye view of all the agencies and look down and see who does what very well and connect you um, as is appropriate. We're also members of the statewide local Office of Emergency Services. Should there be an event, uh, a crisis or disaster, we'd be activated and we would be activated to help veterans with the various issues related to them. And finally, I provide leadership and advocacy as is required locally through collaboratives and different meetings. Next page. These are some of the areas where I can help you connect. I mentioned some of them with employment. I, I work a lot with uh, EDD. I'm a member of many, many of the veteran employment committees. Um, I also work very closely with the America Job Center. Los Angeles County happens to be the only 
location of a veteran um, focused America's Job Center in the entire state. Um, also with the County Veteran Service Offices with George and his staff, days, he'll be coming up. Other members of CalVet, the VA, the Benefits Department of the VA, the Cemetery Department, and other nonprofits as well. Next page. So um, if you're looking for assistance locally um, and you uh, wanna get some help uh, with one of our programs or even other, other programs, you kinda wanna get uh, an idea how they work or maybe who to go to, you're welcome to give me a call. This is my work cell and my email address. And I'll be happy to help. All right, back to you, Michael. All right, thank you very much, Anthony. Very helpful, thank you so much. Um, next up here, we have we have Hector Castillo and we have George Dixon, and they're going to be talking about the County Veteran Service Office. Uh, are, are you there? Uh, are you there, Hector? Yeah, uh, is Hector on? Or he might have got that link. Um, I don't think he's chimed in. But if you run the slide, I'll, I'll pitch it since he works for me and I'll see what happened with him. So. Got it. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm George Dixon, Supervisor of Veteran Services, AKA former Director of Military Veterans Affairs, Monterey County Veteran Services, formerly a senior vet rep. And in the prime of my life, when I first started doing this, uh, Disabled American Veterans Department Service Officer. I'm um, military retired and I'm a veteran over 32 years combined. And I am also labeled as a disabled veteran. I'm rated at 100% permanent total. Um, question for the audience out there, and how bet you can take a look at the um, um, hands that go up. How many army veterans do I have out there? Two, three, four, five, seven, six, five. Um, Marine Corps? A lot of Marines out there. Navy. The organization we rarely hear about, Coast Guard. Any Coast Guard men or women out there? there might be one. And I'm not sure if uh, any of the Space Force have been discharged. Calvin, do you see any Space Force out there at all? Oh, we have a dual Army and Air Force. Cool. Okay, very good. So keep in mind, while you guys are all sitting out there, we all serve together. Um, so all of us took the oath, all of us joined, all of us served in the armed forces. And when we joined the military, there was that stage of confusion where, hey, you know what, I'm going to join the military. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm going to go to basic training. So we started in phase one of confusion. A school and it became more confused. And then when they sent you to your unit, you were totally confused. So then you did your four to six to eight to 12 to 15 or 20 years, or such as myself, 12 years, four months active, 20 years on the reserve side of the house for a total of 32 years combined. And back in the day, um, like Mr. Monk said, each generation of veterans is a little bit different. I served during wartime and peacetime, um, and I retired during the current conflict. So um, everybody, Put on a uniform and serve, but each generation and entitlements were a little bit different, and the way they were briefed when they were separated is different. Um, TAPS classes, when I got out in 1992, were pretty vague, and they put you in a room and said, hey, you have to listen to this for four days, and then half of us didn't really pay attention to what was going on, and the biggest thing in the 90s was, hey, I got to find a job, I got to get out, I got to go to work, and uh, nobody told me basically how to navigate the system. And that's why it's important that you attend these sessions and have your uh, members of your class attend the sessions when they pop up or even join in on the um, CalTAPS presentations that they have or the um, programs that they have. So when you got out, um, Military Veterans Affairs, County Veterans Service Offices, Department of Veterans Affairs, Veteran Service Organizations, it's very confusing on how to navigate them. So when I got out of the service, I started at the low end. I started working with the California Department of Veterans Affairs and the disabled American veterans on the bottom where you see the service providers that assist you as veterans and help you advocate, advocate for your benefits. So it's very important that you understand that the low end, your service providers, disabled American veterans, American Legion, 
storage of plowshares, VFW. They may, they may even have Afghan and Iraq veterans of America. Now, some of the newer organizations that come up are organizations that advocate on your behalf. Um, your county veteran service offices from the bottom up, which is who I represent under California Department of Veterans Affairs, we also advocate on your behalf for benefits that you are entitled or earned. And we are also the ones that approve your college tuition fee waivers and also the ones that put the word veteran on your driver's license. So your county veteran service officer um, that attends your um, college campuses, Hector, he can help you guys with that when you, when you do an event out there. Um, we also advocate for other organizations because our veterans reps are crossed or credited with other organizations such as the Disabled American Veterans, VFW, AMVETS, American Legion. So just in case you can't find your service officer at your local VA medical center, stop off and talk to the county veteran service rep. Um, he or she may be able to still assist you and look up your claim status and look at your claim. Um, your county veteran service officers are credentialed under California Department of Veterans Affairs, which is the state organization similar to the Department of Affairs, but administers all state benefits. Uh, CalVet also advocates at the regional office level and to the Board of Veterans Appeals on claims that you have before the Department of Veterans Affairs. And the biggest one that we all um, join into or go to first when we get out is the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, which is the federal agency which covers your healthcare administration, your Veterans Benefits Administration, and your National Cemeteries Administration, your home loans, and your Chapter 33 benefits that you're um, working on or probably using now. Question to the audience, how many of you are children of veterans? There's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, about, yeah, about 10 or 11-ish. Um, what's great about being a child of veteran as um, Mr. Monk um, to told you earlier, if your parent is a service-connected veteran rated at a minimum of 0%, you may qualify for a college tuition fee waiver if you exhaust all your GI Bill benefits and you meet certain income thresholds. So you can continue on with your college tuition. Next slide. Okay, um, briefly broke it down. Uh, remember the US Department of Veterans Affairs, which is the federal agency, they cover Veterans Healthcare Administration, which is all your healthcare benefits. The Benefits Administration covers compensation, education, home loan, life insurance, and vocational rehabilitation services. Uh, keep in mind that if you're using your Chapter 33 benefits, don't exhaust all your Chapter 33 benefits. And if you're service connected at 10% or higher with an employment handicap, apply for vocational rehabilitation so that you may be able to receive the same variable housing allowance at the same rate you're getting now under Chapter 33. And the place we're all dying to get to, National Cemeteries Administration. So um, they have a nationwide locator. They do presidential memorial certificates, headstones, markers, and your burial benefits. On the right side, as um, Mr. Monk stated earlier, what uh, California Department of Veterans Affairs does is your California TAPS class, which you're in now. Uh, your county veteran service officers are the ones that administer the college tuition fee waiver. We also have a young man from the CalVet Home Loans Office at at our office of Patriotic Hall. Um, we also help you get your family members, for those of you that are kids of veterans that may have an older family member that needs to get into the state veterans home, we help assist with those applications. We, um, we are the approving agencies. They also do benefits and enhancement programs, um, housing assistance, and they have some pretty great homeless prevention programs. Next slide. So what do we do? We're your advocates in the field. So here's some data and stats, and this, this um, monetary number went up a little bit, even during COVID. So our county veteran service officers are located across the 58 counties of the state of California. In 2020, we brought in over $336 million in continuing analyzed benefits for you, the veteran, and your families and your survivors. Next slide. So types of services, when you walk into one of the 22 field locations, now Los Angeles County is working remotely a little bit half and half. Um, Bob Hope Patriotic Call, if you're willing to take the travel down to um, 1816 South Figueroa, we're there Tuesdays and Thursdays from eight to four. Um, I know Hector's beginning to go out to Santa Clarita and he's collaborating with the college to uh, 
go onto the campus again for you guys. So it's very important that um, the Veterans Resource Center collaborate with Hector. And if you need it, I'll have them set up a day just to do VSDs and talk about benefits. So your CVSOs across the state of California, we're your counselors for benefits. We're also your advocates in the community for veterans, local, state, and federal, and community services. We help if the veteran passes away, for those of you with parents, and if the veteran passes away and mom or dad is still living or their spouse, um, we also help with survivor's benefits and help them apply for dependency indemnity compensation. We also help you get the veteran into the cemetery. Now, if you come across, and this does happen sometimes, where we do have students that don't have any family members and they pass away while they're in school. Um, the youngest person I've seen that happen to was about 24. Um, it was a COVID issue. They had no family and it was kind of hard to help um, the student out. Um, the school called and we actually got that veteran placed into the indigent burial program. So if you guys come across something of that nature, we can help put that veteran into the National Cemetery. Uh, claims for compensation and pension. We take you from the incubation stages of the initial beginnings of the claim, from your intent to file, all the way to the Court of Veterans Appeals for Veterans Claims, under the guidance of California Department of Veterans Affairs, who does all the higher level arguing for veterans at the regional office and board levels. We also help with life insurance programs. We can request your records. We work on discharge upgrades. I don't want to ask anybody if anybody's gotten a OTH or general under honorable out there. Um, but um, we do help with discharge upgrades, your college tuition fee waivers. And the big thing right now after this pandemic ends is the veterans designation on the driver's license. Now, what that's supposed to do is if you come into a county veteran service office and have not applied for your state, local, or county benefits, the vet rep will assist you in helping you navigate. So, question to the audience how many have not? applied for any compensation for injury incurred or aggravated by the military service. So I see Hector's gonna have about eight people after this uh, seminar. Next slide. So question, what is service-connected disability? So keep in mind, you gotta think back. Has anybody in this audience ever went on sick call, on active duty or in the reserves? Not saying you guys are riding sick on, I'm not saying what branch you're in, but uh, um, if the disease or injury caused by your active service is continuing today, I would definitely wanna to talk to Hector. So the basic um, term that we're using is if a disease or condition was incurred or aggravated by your active military service. This also includes for those of you that were in the National Guard or Army Reserve or Air National Guard or Reserve Forces, so if we can show the disease or injury incurred in service as a result of your active duty or was aggravated beyond natural progression, we can help you with those claims. The disease must be chronic in nature. That means you must have a current problem today and you must seek treatment or have some sort of treatment records for it. Um, a lot of veterans will come in and say, well, I got hurt uh, 35 years ago and they've never went to the doctor. So there's no link into, there's no nexus to the current disability. It may show in your service treatment records that you twisted your ankle. Now you're walking around hob hobbling on it and you're taking Moltrin over the counter medications, but you never sought medical attention. So just remember in service injury, current treatment, and then link to the current treatment and the in service injury. Next slide. So, what is required for service connection? You got to have Something happened to you in the service. Now, a question, how many of you went to Iraq, Afghanistan, or Vietnam, or Bosnia, or um, any of those other adventurous places? So thinking that the obvious one that we're looking at is probably post-traumatic stress disorder because you were exposed to combat. So something probably did happen to you. If you were in Iraq or Afghanistan, you may have been exposed to some uh, environmental hazards such as burn pits or agents and stuff like that. Um, we, we can do that too, look into those conditions. And we have to have a link between your military service and your current condition. Next slide. How do we do it? Next slide. So I'm not a fan of the intent to file, but if you don't have any of the evidence, 
follow the intent to file. The VA can do that over the phone. Um, and the Department of Veterans Affairs employee can file that for you to protect the effective date of your claim. If you're going to sit down and talk to the vet rep for 45 minutes and get nothing out of that claim or that action, um, file the claim because not all claims are going to be fully developed. But if you want to use the fully developed claims process, have all the evidence in your hand, the vet rep will file that claim and initiate that action for you and get the evidence that's needed. Gather the evidence, treatment records, additional medical opinions, um, buddy your lay statements, show the link to your in-service injury and to, to the VA so it makes it easier for them to process that application. Make sure you attend the comp and pension examinations. If you miss the compensation and pension examinations, either for a physical disability or a mental health issue, the VA will deny that claim based on you missing that exam. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. You come back into the office and say that you're willing to make the exam and then we can get that ball rolling for you. Wait for the decision. The decision right now, even during COVID, they're coming back from about 30 to 60 working days. So they are coming back really quick. Um, if it takes a little bit more time to develop, uh, those decisions will roll out to about six months. But for the most part, during COVID, the last two years, VA has been making really quick decisions, and really quick turnarounds. Next slide. <clears throat> discharge upgrades. Your department, uh, military veterans affairs counselors can help you with discharge upgrades. Keep in mind that if the discharge was other than honorable, general or honorable, and it's within a 15 year time frame, we'll help you complete the 293, guide you on the process. If it's over 15 years, we'll help you complete the 149 and guide you on the process. Um, we do have organizations that um, can help advocate for you on your behalf, like Swords and Plowshares, and there's a number for them down there. And I, may, I think they're more geared towards Northern California, but they may have a resource in Southern California. I know we have a lot of attorneys. Everything we do for veterans, their dependents and survivors is for free. A veteran should not have to pay for basic benefits claims, um, discharge upgrades. There are some pro bono attorneys that will help you out there, but always check to see if the person you're working with is accredited by the Department of Veterans Affairs credential. Um, so keep in mind, if you have what they call bad paper, talk to the County Veterans Service Office in your area or one of us, and we'll guide you on upgrades. Um, I'll give you a little story. Um, one individual had 12 years active duty. He, um, he got put out with the OTH. His child had passed away. He ended up in jail. For four years after separation, he thought he could not use the VA. I encountered him in East Los Angeles at Volunteers of America. We took him down to the VA clinic, enrolled him in VA healthcare, where we had to advocate on his behalf because the clerk looked at the last period of service, but that veteran completed all of his service or his first contract. He did not extend or re-enlist early, and they got him into healthcare. We did his claim for compensation. He got 70% for his child dying in anxiety disorder he had, and then he went to work for another organization. He may be 100% now, but... These are the stories that um, we encounter even with a, just a homeless veteran. Next slide. How do you find your CVSO for LA County? Um, there's a bit, well, there's a book, you can look in the book. And I know at the end of the slide, we have our 877 number. And I know Anthony has the hyperlink and I have the hyperlink in here too on the last slide, you guys. Next slide. And that brings us to Barrier of Business and their family for CalVet. So on, on the uh, CalVet page, and the, it's pretty small, find your service provider. And I believe the CalVet webpage, you guys have it so that we can pop in the, um, the zip code and to bring up the um, Cal, your CalVet resource. Also right now, do you guys, for those of you that have a phone to the right, it says find your CVSO. Um, Type in 1-844-SERVET, and then it's going to prompt you to ask you, how did you hear about this phone number? And then type in your zip code, and it's going to connect you probably up to uh, Judith, who's answering our phones right now. And just say, George said, test this out, and I don't care if there's 61 of you guys calling it. She's going to probably call me up and say, why did 61 people say test this out? But um, go ahead and do that if you can on your time, and it works pretty good. 
if you have buddies in northern and so and so more so south of here in San Diego, it's going to connect the veteran into the local county veteran service office. Next slide. Cool. And I just said pop in your zip code if you want to try it that way. But the 844 number is pretty good. And I think that for the most part, most county veteran service officers are working a minimum of two days, and some are actually having people come into the office. Uh, we have the capability of doing all claims documents remotely, and you sign your claims or your VA forms using the finger ink application, and it's all done remotely. Next slide. Yep, there's a CVSO line. Next slide. And uh, pick on Hector, and I think Hector got um maybe got dropped off because of that email that went out. He probably thought it got canceled. And there is a hyperlink. He is located at 26111 Bouquet Canyon Road. And he is going out there on Thursdays, I believe, at this time in the slow transition. But shoot Hector an email. He's a corpsman. How many Navy veterans do I have out there again? Hector might have been the one giving you guys Moultrin back in the day. So make sure you make contact with him. He's very good at thoroughly screening your charts and um, work on, he'll work on your claim. Um, one last question. How many military retirees do I have out there? So military retirees, when we get out, we know everything and we don't really pay attention to what the TAPS person or the soldier or sailor for life presentation is going on. And we get our ratings cut low. So retirees getting out and they're only rated 20%. That's not a good deal, especially after you did 20 or 30 years of active duty and, or even the reserve side of the house. So you may want somebody to take a look at your service treatment records again. Uh, next slide. Okay, we'll run through mine. It's kind of repeat of what Hector's is. Um, next slide. <clears throat> so very basic understanding of what, advocate, what we do for you in the, in the um, field, basic understanding of your VA benefits. It's not going to make you the subject matter expert. Um, understand how we as CBSOs assist you in the community. And then at the end, I'm paneling out your questions. Next slide. So who do we assist, who we are, who we advocate for, and some very basic benefits information. Next slide. So remember, county veteran service officers, we're key, similar to what Anthony does, but we're the key in your community. We advocate on behalf of veterans, their dependents, and survivors, and we're committed to California to provide vital, efficient system of services that advocate for you, the veteran, your dependents, and your survivors. Critical role. Next slide. So when I was a director, I was the advisor to the board. As a supervisor, I still I advise my director and the board, other official agencies. I'm in heavily involved with legislators and even my congressmen and women. Um, I got to testify at the state level for um, legislation involving incarcerated veterans, um, veterans and independent survivors. We advocate on their be their behalf. We're the voice and other organizations to include Department of Veterans Affairs and California Department of Veterans Affairs. Next slide. So who we are continued, we're dedicated professional, extra professional customers, external and internal customers. We advocate to develop programs in our community to support our military, to assist our veterans, dependents and survivors. We're devoted to the cause, taking care of those who served and are still serving and we're defenders of veterans rights you earn. So in the event you get a denial letter and you've been turned down and you don't know where to go, we're another voice. Um, sometimes people don't click with everybody um, find the person you click with. We look at your case on through advocates' eyes, not strictly black and white, where some people will tell you, no, you can't do this, and then they don't really research the regulation. Remember, benefits in general is a very complicated um, system of services for veterans, and it's hard to navigate. Next slide. So who do we serve? Generally, there's four populations that we serve, service members, veterans, National Guards, men and women, family members. And we do also get a lot of individuals that are advocating on behalf of veterans, but generally we will not give information unless there's proper forms that the VA requires us to sign. So um, keep in mind, we help anybody with a no closed door approach. Next slide. So, 
Some common factors, you put the dollar sign up there, common factors, eligibility criteria, who qualifies for VA benefits in general, and what types of benefits you may, not will, qualify for. Next slide. So as you know, to be service connected on a direct basis, only one day of service. That means you could have got shoved off the cattle car and they trampled you back in the day when I went through basic training and probably even Anthony, when the drill sergeant said, hey, we're only supposed to put 32 people in those cattle cars and they crammed in 78 people in those cattle cars. Yes, Anthony, that happened to you. you That's right. I, 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 cattle cars were a part of what I did. That's right. Yep. And um, when I was a drill sergeant, I forgot to tell you guys, I was an Army drill sergeant for three years active. Then I did a drill sergeant leader thing on the reserve side for umpteen amount of years. But um, we were told we could only put 32 people in the cattle car. And I'm like, oh, that's a big difference from what happened to me. I never cram people in cattle car. Okay. So some benefits require wartime service. So they look at service during wartime or peacetime. And remember, wartime service has a little bit different standard than a peacetime veteran. If you're looking to file for a VA pension or help an older veteran um, secure some income, um, income, there are some income requirements type of discharge that you had prior to separation. Um, and we look at the types of disabilities you're claiming. Either it's incurred as a direct basis, secondary, aggravated, or presumptive. And there are others, three other criteria that we look at um, to receive compensation as if. And for pensioners age 65 or older, the VA considers you disabled. Next slide. So some common factors. If you serve, you earn. That's the CACVSO and CalVet. Slogan, if you serve, you earn. If you haven't applied, make sure those eight or nine of you that never secured benefits or talked to anybody, talk to Hector about these benefits. Disability compensation, remember for disease or injury incurred or aggravated as a result of your military service. Uh, vocational reemployment and, and um, readjustment training. Um, keep in mind that if you are running out of your GI Bill and you're service connected at 10% or higher with unemployment handicap, VA prefers 20, but we still want to get you through the process. This way you can keep the B variable housing allowance rate. It's up to 48 months of training or, or any or combination of any program. So if you use 36 months of your job bill, you have one year of rehabilitation that you can use. Keep, uh, keep in mind that on a case by case basis, they can extend that. Um, Department of Veterans Affairs, along with CalVet, helps you with your home loans, refi, education, and your health care. A pension for widows and their dependents, that is income-based. And when the time comes and veterans pass away, um, we help the spouses with dependency indemnity compensation, which the term dependency indemnity compensation is for the county veteran service officer or your veterans advocacy group or an attorney, if you have one, is similar to the same standard of service-connected depth or service connection, we have to prove the death or disease or injury was caused by the veteran's service connected condition and burial benefits. Uh, keep in mind, we also have some pretty cool state cemeteries. I had the opportunity to open up the Central Coast Cemetery when I was a director up there. My wife gets a little agitated because I say, I tell her, when I go, put me over here because that was my old training area. I was stationed at Fort Ord, California for many years. Next slide. So if the book is matching, it should be on page 32. Always look at your resource books. Remember, the money you get from the Department of Veterans Affairs and VA compensation is non-taxable, non-reportable. I always get questions before April 15th. Hey, do I have to report the 3,600 books I get from the VA? Non-taxable, non-reportable. If you served, you earned. Next slide. What is service connection? As stated before in a previous slide, for disease or injury incurred as a result of your active military service, or aggravated, and the term the VA likes to use is the unnatural progression. Um, question, is there anybody in the audience where the recruiter said, hey, don't say nothing about that bad knee or that foot condition, I'll get you in? Oh, there's a couple of you, so you may have a condition that was aggravated beyond natural progression. Typical beneficiaries or service members, veterans who become injury, injured or physically during their active military service as a result of a physical injury or psychological issues. Combat veterans, if you're out there, you may have some issues. Not saying that you do or you don't, make sure you get into the healthcare and talk to somebody. Next slide. 
So eligibility for service connection under these conditions, presumptive disabilities, generally the veteran would have to have about 90 days active service to be eligible for presumptive service connection, but there are some presumptive conditions for, are there any Vietnam people out there still? Usually they have one, there's three. Make sure if you have not done this, those of you that served in Vietnam or off the waters, um, get the Agent Orange Protocol examination done to you. Sepulveda VA Ambulatory Care Center is the quickest one to do it if you have not had that done. Um, Iraq, Afghanistan vets, there are some presumptive conditions that you may have been exposed to. Generally, if you look at it as symptoms of a minor nerve agent, twitching, joint pain, environmental hazards, um, these conditions could be service connected. And they just redid or added under new legislation some respiratory elements that if you were previously denied before, you may want to come back and reapply for those if you served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Vietnam veterans, you need to get in and do the Agent Orange. And by the way, we just celebrated a 50 year anniversary of the war. The VA did a great job. Alberto Alpasan and myself are on that, but um, welcome home, you guys. Um, you guys were the ones that trained me. So, um, you know, I really respect you guys. Um, individual unemployability, if you're rated at 60% um, for one disability by itself or one disability at 40% and others combined to 70, and it stops you from substantial gainful employment and you're going to school, but you're, you're not ever gonna go back to work full time, talk to Hector about unemployability or myself. And it's very important. That'll pay you as if you were 100%. And all the other benefits flow, the tax exemption, um, the, um, the um, commissary card, et cetera. Next slide. <clears throat> so when you apply and you walk into the County Veterans Service Office, the DAV, the Department of Veterans Affairs, whoever you go to, always bring in, if possible, your DD-214. For those of you that have applied for benefits before through our office, we may already have that a record. Bring current medical records. Um, don't worry about the Department of Veterans Affairs medical records. You just need to know how many VAs you've been to in your lifetime, because once we list the VA medical records on the form, the VA is gonna secure the Veterans Benefits Administration is gonna secure Veterans Healthcare Administration records for you. Bring your marriage and divorce records. Um, most I've seen a veteran, he was divorced eight times. So that was a pretty hard one to um, catch because the VA couldn't catch up to adding or taking off his spouse. If uh, direct deposit's the way to go, if you don't like banks, the VA has what they call a direct express a card where you can um, get, the car, get your money put on a debit card. Talk to an accredited service representative your buddies are really great at giving you knowledge on how to do things, but put a face to the claim. And I know some of you have a lot of knowledge on claims and stuff that you've done on your own, but sometimes you overlook stuff. Um, some of you may have filed through e-benefits and you overlooked items that a vet rep could have looked at your charge and said, hey, what about this? What about this? What about this? Some veterans will file on e-benefits and list four items that discharge. Um, because the VA person's saying, oh, just put four things on there. You're good. And when you get out, put the other 20 things on there, especially military retirees. What happens with us is we go about life and we forget to put the other 20 things on there and we lose the effective date back to the date of discharge or retirement because we waited over a year. That's why it's important to talk to a subject matter expert or somebody's credential. Face-to-face, um, -face, put a face with your claim. We help you navigate the process. We help you argue the process or advocate on your behalf in the event that you get denied by helping you file your supplemental claim, higher level review, or taking it right to the Board of Veterans Appeals for you. Next slide. Some other benefits you can get. If you're 10% for knee impingement and you have a metal brace, you get an annual clothing allowance, automobile allowance, some special adaptive housing grant programs. If you're severely disabled, veterans mortgage life insurance for severely disabled veterans. For most of us, we're down around the Service Disabled Veterans Life Insurance, SDVI, or what they refer to as RH insurance. That's a $10,000 whole life policy. Um, a lot of us forget to do that. You have two years from the date of your first rating of 0% to apply for it. If you don't apply within the two years for the RH insurance, then you have to wait for a separate disability to reapply for it. 
and then the two-year time frame start, um, starts over again. There's also a waiver for 100% permanent total veterans with some supplemental insurance. And you know, my wife gets on me now. I'm 16. She's like, "Well, how come I have the 10,000, but I never put anything?" I said, "I'm not going anywhere yet, um, unless something, unless you're thinking of doing something to me." She starts laughing, but it's always good to have that insurance. I've seen widows, widowers come in, or spouses, and the veteran passes away, and they've really taken care of their loved one with 20, 30 grand, and the spouses didn't know about it. Special monthly compensation for loss of use of or uh, Creative Oregon or loss of hand or foot, that pays additional about $130 a month on top of your rating. So keep these things in mind, and that's why it's important to talk to one of us so we can screen your charts. Next slide. CBSO staff, remember, we're the voice of the people. For those who cannot speak for themselves, we're a vital part of your community. Um, we're an asset to the Board of Supervisors, a valuable asset to community partners, volunteer, and we also volunteer at your stand downs, your justice events. We also go into the jails, the prisons, and uh, work with local law enforcement. There's a lot of things that we can do, and College of the Canyon, since Hector, your rep, just make sure you get them involved with what you do. And um, remember, we're limited to the staffing, but if it's a big event you have on campus, I can probably help you guys out with more staff, especially with the VSD, um, and that's an important thing. Next slide. <clears throat> Summary, we up on our standing familiar. Oh, we went back to the front. And at, do you have any questions at the end? Next slide. Remember, advocacy is from the heart, desire the need, remember the willing, the able, and the not willing but not able. We help them all. And I'd like to use the quote at the bottom, Help a veteran today, change life forever. That was my old boss, Mr. Saxon. And um, that's what our mission is. And it's in the heart to help veterans. And it's, it's not just a job. They're not just form filers. Next slide. And they actually put the 1844 serve vet. And if you tested it out, there's my email. And then um, Anthony, if you have the, I think on one of your sites, you might have the hyperlink to the wait while. Uh, wait, we, we are using the wait while similar to um, VA, and what I can do is drop the last slide in with um, with um, Hector's wait while link to Santa Clarita office if you guys want that. And that's it for me. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Thank you very much, George, for all that information and the, the CVSO claims and compensation. I'm sure that's going to help a lot of veterans out there. We definitely um, as, as part of CalVet, we, we really get the most questions about um, claims and things of that nature. So uh, thank you very much. That's uh, very helpful. So uh, as, as far as any questions that you guys have today, these are um, all the presenters that we had and there's their contact information up there as well if you guys want to take that down. Also, um, right here is our post uh, webinar survey. So uh, there is the link in the QR code as well. So um, you can just uh, take a few minutes to uh, complete that survey. We do value your guys' feedback, as I did mention earlier. And uh, my counterpart here, Sean, uh, he's on right now. And I uh, just wanted to ask Sean, is there any questions that you want to answer that you want to clarify up that were in the Q&A tab that weren't uh, directly assessed or answered? Absolutely. And thank you, Michael. Um, we have several questions in the Q&A tab. And uh, one of the questions was, I've been waiting for over a year to get my military medical records and been getting the runaround. Uh, at the time I got out, it's been bounced around to different places. And I don't want to delay, but they were looking to, as far as gathering all the information, how do they process, you know, what is the process in this situation? Oh, I Question so for right George. now, as you guys know, COVID hit hard, and if, um, you sent in the SF-180 to St. Louis, and the records aren't coming in, um, you may want to check with us. If you filed a claim, the Department of Veterans Affairs may already have your records in your file, um, and I would definitely check if, if you're local with Hecker, we can probably take a look and see where they're at. Um, question back to that person would be, did you file a claim with the VA, and they're supposed to pull your charts also, too? So there are alternate depository sources for you too. Thank also, you I wanted to, to mention, I, I did put on our chat, the panelist chat, the link that George was referring to for the LA County CVSO. If you guys could uh, make that uh, available to the rest of the group, I'd appreciate that. Absolutely. And there, we also included a, a map with uh, the 
the links for the CVSO contact information and for the different links information contacts as well. Uh, the next question coming in is, uh, I'm rated at 90% Iraq and Afghanistan tours, denied presumptive conditions. Is there any specific verbiage to use when appealing for those presumptive conditions? You need to contact the vet rep so we can take a look at your most recent denial. You have one year from the date of that decision to do a supplemental claim or request a higher level review, um, or you can send it directly to the Board of Veterans Appeals. But um, we really want to take a look at why you were denied and um, make sure we can formulate a good argument. Or if it's something basic where you're missing maybe some supplemental evidence, you wouldn't have to um, take it up to the board. We can resolve it at a, on a supplemental claim type application. So if it's under a year, I would encourage that veteran to get in and talk to somebody um, so we can take a look at the decision. The next question coming in, uh, is the VA regional CNP office of any help with disability claims and appeals? Not the comp and pen office. Uh, the, your doc, if you have a good rapport with your doctor, if you're looking to take a look at some old CMPs, we can request a copy of some old CMPs that you've had. If your decision is recent and somebody needs to review it, um, I would get it down to... Um, somebody to take a look at it because sometimes a lot of veterans under the new AMA process overlook evidence. You'll see a decision that'll come back saying the injury was incurred. We see that you were hurt in service, but we cannot link your current injury to the service. So that's the error right there. And then one of us can say, Hey, you just told me that the injury was in service. I need to take this to a higher level review and point this out to the person that looked at my case. So um, a comp and pen office, if you missed the comp and pen, especially the one over there at West LA, they'll rebook you for a new one and then they'll send it out to QTC, which is the outside agency that does the comp and pens in LA County. One, one other thing too, is that uh, I think George talked about it is George uh, and his staff of about 20 claims reps do the initial claims uh, for the individuals here in LA County. And then uh, if a veteran wants to appeal or has a question about the decision, they go back to, the, to that claims rep that helped them and often they will initiate, his staff, Georgia's staff will initiate something and it'll go to the CalVet staff, which is at the regional office. So we have a regional office in LA as, as well as San Diego and the, the Bay Area. And somebody at that level, and George mentioned the manager, his name is Alberto Alpasan. He and his staff then take a look at it and they can go to the VA appeals board, which, which is, uh, uh, also stationed at that same location where our regional office is, where it, they, can, they can make contact there. So my point is that George and his staff is really the first step when you have questions and you have issues just like we have going on. Any of the county veteran service offices are where you want to start, and then he can take you and lead you to these other places. And in particular, LA County, because they're so large and they do such volume, they have a great relationship with uh, the regional office of the VA and CalVet. And then keep in mind that um, on your supplemental claims or higher level reviews, the arguments are done at county level. And then the, um, at the CalVet level, they'll take that veteran for free and argue with those arguments that we develop at the end and also mm -hmm. to the arguments too. Mm -hmm. That's right. and, um, when we file the disagreements to the Board of Veterans Appeals, County Veteran Service Officers making the argument at the bottom and it's shot up through CalVet for review. And then CalVet will add on and um, push the issue for that veteran for free. It doesn't cost anything. But what's amazing is the team, this teamwork we have on a state and county level, it's really unsurpassed. It really is. They do a phenomenal job, especially in, in, his, uh, in this particular area. So We have two questions that are similar, so I'm going to kind of run them together. And they're basically asking about the VA changes in the, in the rating system when will it go into effect and, and what are some of the basics regarding that? Oh, so they're talking about the where they rate, they're looking at the sleep apnea and the way they rate mental disabilities. So right now it's in um, a public view review, right? And um, once we get the word on it, because we were just briefed that on, on a conference and it's supposed to be a, a little bit better when they're rating mental disabilities instead of looking at us under how our earning capacity is, if we're doing, uh, so in order, in other words, if somebody's trying to get 100% service connected for PTSD, you have to be really messed up doing bizarre things. 
So um, hopefully it's passed and it's more in favor of the veteran where they're just actually looking at your disability versus your earning capacity and if you're really dysfunctional. So it's still under for public comment right now and we haven't gotten any word on it. So that if it is passed, it's gonna be effective the date of liberalizing law. And the questions I always get is that is, is that gonna affect my current rating? No, because your current rating is, is locked in and the only way they would take a second look at it is to say, hey, you know what, I think I got worse and I wanna redo this whole thing again. And veterans really need to make sure they talk to the doctor before they start doing that because the VA will send you on another comp and pen examination to get reviewed. Um, you do stand a chance to propose reduction if you don't have any continuity to back that case up. So um, it's still under review and I know Alberto's gonna shoot us a fact sheet down when it does take effect. And the same thing, everybody's worried about the sleep apnea and the tinnitus one too. So um, more to follow on that. And maybe Calvin, when we do our next seminar, have, we'll have some information on that. <laughs> Veronica raised her hand. We have a few more questions. Um, my uncle was exposed to Agent Orange and suffered until he passed away from it. He was fighting for disability compensation until he died. He had no children or wife. Can our other family members bring up compensation on his behalf? It would only fall in the uh, category if there was benefits to a de deceased beneficiary's estate to pay bills towards that estate. Or if there was a disabled child at the time of death and um, be a criteria for disabled child journey before the age of 18. Uh, the next question coming up is, my spouse is a vet who recently had a major medical emergency and is unable to talk or do much at this time. What's a good first step for me to, to help? So um, there is an alter alternate signer form um, that you would have to sign to work with us. Um, so because if she's not able to sign or talk or advocate on herself, you would be allowed to sign that, um, get in. And then if you have conservatorship or um, uh, you have fiduciary authority over her, we would need to see that documentation. Then we can probably help you with any benefits that you're trying to apply for her. Journey, it sounds like it would be like aid and attendance or something like that if she's in a assisted living or nursing home care. Um, or maybe even some VA compensation to help defray the cost of care or wh wherever the veteran's at. But your, our county vet reps will talk to you as, as long as you have the proper um, um, documents showing that you are have power of attorney over to act on her behalf. And then we would have you sign the VA forms that are appropriate for us to work with you. The next question coming up is, uh, if we have medications that affected or added new disabilities, how do you file a claim for that? You file the claim the same as if you would do direct service connection, but it would be under 38 USC 1151 based on the medications given to you by the VA, because now the VA, uh, if you guys notice, the VA likes to check our kidney functions out because of all the Motrin they give us. Uh, so I'm rated 100% and I have a lot of chronic pain. I take a lot of Motrin. So if my kidneys fail, I would file under 30. You'll see 1151 based on the medications given to me because it was treatment by the VA facility. And they knew that that Motrin would damage my kidneys. And we do that for, for you guys also too. That would be on the other three parts of service connection. Um, so under 30 USC 1151 as if in service, vocational rehabilitation, if you're injured during that training, or the VA also has the paired organ rules. So if you're blind in one eye and the other eye goes blind, we can connect that, deaf in one ear and go deaf in the other ear, ear they'll go with that. Um, lungs and kidneys, paired organs. Next question coming up is, do you know what they look for in sleep apnea with CPAP for a CNP exam? Yep, because I'm rated 50% for it. So um, I lost a lot of oxygen. I, I'm issued a CPAP and I'm rated secondary to my anxiety disorder because it does aggravate my anxiety. So they looked at my oxygen flow. Um, if I'm issued a CPAP machine, and is the non-service connected condition aggravating your service connected condition or is it, look at the term secondary to, is it a cause of, and the VA has to look at that. Um, so if you're trying to do it on a direct basis, it's gonna be in your service treatment records that you were diagnosed in service with it. 
if you're trying to do it 30 years later, you have to show a nexus or a link to another condition and your treatments for it. So you, you want to link it secondary to another condition. And I've seen some pretty far-fetched ones where somebody has asthma and they tried to link it to the asthma and it aggravated it. So the VA looked at that. But we would highly encourage you to talk to somebody and look at your heart. Um, they're looking at the CPAC and the oxygen levels in your um, system. Uh, the next question coming up is going to be, how do I know if the doctor if the doctor letter I have is sufficient to be reassessed for my claims? Is there someone who can help and read the letters I have from my doctor? Also, will the records from the VA that I have been seen in the past five years need to be printed out and turned in with those outside uh, doctor letters? So your outside doctor letters, take them over to one of us so we can look at it. Hector, since he's closest to the college, and once you, you need to know the names and locations of your doctors or VA, VA medical centers, if you're using them, because the VA will pull their own medical records for you. You don't have to print those out. Now, if you want to print them out and let one of us look at them, you know, we can highlight it and upload them, but it's uh, duplicating the work. So the VA is actually going to pull the charts. Um, and the vet rep can actually summarize what's in your chart for you also too. So, um, but if they're private medical records, um, when you walk into the office, pull the private medical records so we can upload them in the system if, if you're going to do the fully developed claims process. So the next question we have coming up is about tinnitus. Um, the tinnitus has gotten worse and they wake up in the middle of the night with the sleeping noises in the ears. Is it a 10% for tinnitus? That's the max it'll ever be. But I would maybe go back and add an anxiety disorder, which um, that it was a far-fetched claim, but we have four or five veterans like, that added secondary anxiety with adjustment disorder to tinnitus and got granted it. So he would have to you know, go see the docs. And right now it's capped at 10%. There was legislation at one time, and I was on that, that bandwagon back in the 90s, where we were trying to get 10% for each ear, but the VA papooed that one, so. I guess they didn't. Uh, so the next question coming up is the, the Vietnam era non-combat PTSD currently being treated by VA psychiatrists and psychologists for the past year. Where do I start? What do I need? Uh, a, a diagnosis of PTSD. If it's military sexual trauma, personal trauma, I've seen, for those of you that are familiar with Full Metal Jacket, I've seen people in that era, and I went through in 79 where Drill Sarge did hit you. Um, we can service connect that. So um, come in and talk to one of us and we'll help you with the 210781 alpha form. If you take a look at that and see what the requirements are, write about what happened to you. Talk to Hector, myself, or Joe down in the VA clin um, medical center over there in, um, or outpatient clinic in Sepulveda. Or if you're coming more up north, we have Keith up here and Hector frequents these areas too. But it's very important that you get the stressor on paper, you have the diagnosis, and the VA is going to go back and try to verify the event. Sometimes they can't verify the event, but with MST cases, the criteria is a little bit different or personal trauma case. Um, so I'd highly encourage you to get in and talk to one of us so we can take a look at the, the claim or help you develop it. If it was previously denied, then we would appoint representation so we can actually look at your claims folder and tell you what we see and what you need to do to um, build a better claim. And sometimes it's just a statement from mom or dad or a family member that knew that this happened to you. Believe it or not, some of us as some of us older veterans, I, you know, we wrote letters home to our mom and mom kept every letter you wrote. And we can use that as evidence if we can find it. Oh, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. It looks like we've gotten through a, a lot of questions today. And uh, I see that my teammate, Michael, has put up the post-webinar survey information. If you have a moment, we would like you to participate in the post-webinar survey. It does help us design the types of webinars that people are looking for, and it makes sure that we drive the information in the right direction to meet your needs. Um, but for the questions and answers, that appears to be all at this time. I highly encourage everybody, you know, talk to somebody. Um, 
for your claims. If you're previously denied, let somebody take a second look at it. Um, nothing venture, nothing gain. And one of the older veterans uh, rating specialists told us, you know, it's our right to file the claim and to obligated decision. Um, don't give up the fight. And there's a lot of people out there for you. All these veterans organizations do help. Um, worst comes to worst, you know, take it to the next level. We do know uh, attorneys and groups like that that take you to the uh, Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, but we always want to try and do things for free. Um, I know if a veteran files and they get an $80,000 retro, I wouldn't want 20% of that going to an attorney when the veterans group and the veteran themselves did most of the legwork. All right, thank you guys very much, uh, especially for all the information and uh, helping out with answering those questions. So uh, we have some upcoming webinars here in April. Um, if you're interested in any of these events, estate planning, compensation, pension, um, that's uh, today and um, the, well, I mean, uh, next week. So then that's gonna be following legal services, expungement, and discharge upgrades, CalVet programs, disability claims and appeals and uh, bankruptcy. So if you guys are interested in any of those, um, you can uh, definitely get those uh, from our website. Uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for your service and uh, everybody that came out here today and uh, especially um, Sean and Anthony and, and George uh, for all, all the great information and thank you guys for coming out. And uh, I wanted to thank you guys, uh, service members for uh, coming out here and listening to this today. Um, again, there's our uh, social media channels and the QR codes. Um, there's the, it, it, if you guys uh, still have some ongoing questions here, um, you guys can email one of our guest speakers directly um, with their contact information, or um, you can contact the California Department of Veteran Affairs with uh, their hotline and, or their email as well. So uh, that, that does conclude today's uh, webinar, and uh, thank you guys very much. Okay. See you guys later. Bye.